Hello, friends, and welcome to the Exploring Washington State podcast. My name is Scott Cowan, and I'm the host of the show. Each episode, I have a conversation with an interesting guest who is living in or from Washington State. These are casual conversations with real and interesting people. I think you're going to like the show. So let's jump right in with today's guest. So I'm sitting down with Curtis Ashby today. Curtis is a painter. He's got other things going on, but I found out about him through my daughter, Mackenzie. She said, hey, there's this guy. He does really cool stuff. He sent me, you sent her a beanie, right? For your brand? Yep, I sent her, yeah. Yeah. A beanie and a shirt. Okay, so the reason I'm saying the beanie is, so the other, and it's yellow, right? Yellow beanie? Mm -hmm. Right. So the other day I'm, so people that listen to this regularly know that my daughter lives in Austria. And so, uh, and my granddaughter lives in Austria. It's funny how that works, right? Anyway, um, the other day I'm on a Skype call with with them. We're talking, and, and my granddaughter's in in the ca- on the camera, and she's wearing a yellow beanie. And I go, that's a cool hat. Where'd you get that? And Mackenzie goes, oh, Curtis sent that to me. That's the hat I was telling you about. Lily stole it from me. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So I'm, you know, anyway. So we're going to talk about your brand and all that, but let's get started. So why don't you share with the audience kind of how you got into this because you, you're known for doing murals right and a lot of bird stuff so i think that i got two big questions why murals and why birds yeah it, those, those are questions i get a lot actually <laughs> okay um so i started out uh well if you, probably about 10 years back i had a uh, art gallery in Seattle and it was just a, a small gallery in uh, Greenwood okay and I I uh, I did that for a little while and then I I decided that I wanted to start doing murals and so I uh, I sold the gallery to a friend and just focus start focusing on murals and I just started having a, a I started painting birds and then just sort of grew into just it was more than just drawing them i I started having a passion about birds in general just i would paint a bird and then start recognizing it and you know it's kind of like you kind of the like the red car thing you know you you (laughs) see red car and all of a sudden you see you know hundreds of red cars so i i would paint a bird and then i would see that bird everywhere and so that kind of got me into to the bird watching and so the more I did that, the more I just wanted to paint birds and um, right. start so, doing murals. But you still didn't answer the question, though. So here's the thing. You, so you had a gallery. Yeah. And, and and first off, you said 10 years ago. Were you 12? Because you look like you're about 18, man. You don't look very old. So, you know, I got this <laughs> vision you. of you. You know, Okay. Anyway, I kid. But, well, no, because you do look really young. But you started, you had a gallery in Greenwood. All right. That's cool. But then you said you, you decided you wanted to start painting murals. So once again, why murals? I mean, what what is it about a mural that was drawn you were drawn to? Uh, I feel like murals are a way just to. It's like a like a billboard, essentially. And so I feel like it's a billboard for my art, and okay. it's 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 a way for me to put my art on a big stage for everyone to see, and also just share it with the community. It's uh, murals and art is a way to to brighten the community and just share art and um, early on I was inspired by seeing murals in different cities and just uh, thinking about the artists that created these and just being you know inspired in a way that like oh I maybe I could do that someday okay so before murals what type of art were you creating um, I was creating smaller works mostly on wood and canvas and okay. um, I, yeah, that's kind of how it started out, just just painting small things. And then it took a little bit of brain effort to translate the small scale uh, work into a large mural because it's it's really a, a little bit of a different process, just expanding well, it so, so large like that. That's why I wanted to ask, because it's like, if you were used to painting on, uh, you know, let's say a, a standard canvas size right let's say Mm -hmm. you know poster size two foot by three foot you know all right and then now all of a sudden you're painting something i saw one of your murals is 200 feet long 
right? Yeah. yeah okay, yeah. so so that's a massive shift in s- scale. Right. Um, and you can go to, you know, I'll say Hobby Lobby, sorry, but you know, you can go to Hobby Lobby and buy canvas. That's easy. It's but you can't go to an art store and buy a building to paint on. I mean, you you got to you got to how does one practice murals, I guess, is the next question I have for you is how did you get, how did you convince that first building owner to say, yeah, you can do this? Uh, it was, you know, it was a little tricky convincing like early on, um, because I didn't have a lot of, uh, work in my portfolio that showed that I could paint large scale, you know, right. So, a little bit of trust, a little bit of, uh, you know, marketing on my side and just kind of just, you know, uh, just kind of showing or just, you know, I'm trying to think of the word, um, just a uh, little charisma, you know, just <laughs> just kind of uh, showing them or telling them that I could do it and then figuring out how to do it after that. So you and, were lying uh, to them. Let's be honest. Uh, yeah, you, were, yeah. you were lying to them, and it's okay. I mean, that's that's kind of what art's about, you know. You gotta you gotta sell yourself first, and then uh, prove that you can do it later. <laughs> so, so so many of so many of the people that I know that are artists, dear friends of, like okay, so it, it, and I I have a fear that a couple of them are going to listen to this episode, and I'm what I'm about to say is insulting. I don't want them to be insulted, but they're going to be insulted. Is they're terrible business people. They're they they don't want to do that. They they want to do the art. Getting them to price a piece is impossible. Not impossible, but feels impossible. It's like pulling I, teeth. <laughs> yeah, and I can't imagine them going out and you know, quote unquote, knocking on the door and saying, "Hey, yeah. I want to paint the side of your building with birds or whatever," because they they would just find any reason to not make that effort because they just want to paint they just want to paint or they just want to whatever their their specialty is or whatever they love doing so i applaud you for having the um the cojones to you know to put yourself out there and take that risk i guess at the worst and what would the worst have been You, you, you you convinced me to paint my building you don't do a good job you paint over it Sure. I mean, that's yeah. really the worst, right? I mean, that, you, yeah, you can't, that's the cool you, thing about paint. <laughs> yeah, you can't really fail. Okay. Right. So you got started doing murals. So when you started the murals, were they birds to begin with, or were you doing other stuff, or has it always been birds? Um, it's almost always been birds. Um, okay. I, 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 I was inspired by other artists, and in a way, um, like tattoo artists, you know, when you see – um, tattoo artists that show their their work they only show the best stuff the the stuff they love doing and that right. inspired me you know in to only show the work that I love doing and so that was that was birds and so the more I showed that I was painting birds the more more commissions for bird murals I got and so I kind of you know directed um, my commission and my audience in in that direction Okay. So let's go back to the first, the first person that said, yes, you can do a mural on my building. Do you remember that, that first, first commission? I remember, I remember it in high school, I did a a mural and the, the, uh, homeowner reached out to the, the art teacher and, uh, she said, I, I want someone to paint a mural on my retaining wall. Right. So I, I was selected somehow, and uh, so I I don't don't exactly remember what I painted, but I know okay. that was that was my first mural ever. Okay. And I knew nothing about painting murals, and I don't think I was very prepared, and it probably was not a good <laughs> mural. But you know that was what, like my my was entrance she, into. Was she happy? She was happy. Then she was, was happy. A, then it was a good piece of art. It was a success. Yeah, exactly. If the, if the, if the client is happy and you were a kid, mm-hmm. um, it's a win for both, you know, it, you know, so that's awesome. All right. Now let's talk about though, like 
on your website and and I can't bounce over there because my browser's at full screen to do this, but um, I don't know. I don't know the name of the building, but it's where Charlie's restaurant is, is in, in Puyallup. Yes. Um, I know that because my parents used to go eat there a lot. And so yeah. from familiar with the restaurant and the crowd, how did you get that specific um, project? So I you didn't realize there'd be such like, like it's almost like taking a test. I'm asking you like, <laughs> <laughs> no, this is good. This is what the people want to know. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe <laughs> I want to know and it's my show. So it's all good. <laughs> um, I am actually, uh, friends with the, the previous owners. It's since changed ownership, Okay. but I knew the people that own the building and they were looking to put a mural on the side of the building and okay. they reached out to me. Okay. And, um, actually the, the previous owners, they've, they've been supportive of me in my art process since the very beginning, which is kind of a, a cool story. I worked at, uh, Ferrelli's pizza. Okay. Long, long, long time ago yeah. when I was probably 18, 19. And, uh-huh. uh, I had my very first gallery show in Seattle and the, the two people that owned or worked at charlie's that i worked with for the the charlie's mural uh they came up to my gallery show my very first show ever right and so uh they reached out just a couple years ago and they say hey we want a mural on the side of our building here and they kind of just let me do whatever i want and i worked with the um pl main street association Mm -hmm. um and they were super great to work with and it was just a overall great experience and they gave me so much uh control of the project and just kind of said here's a couple parameters and otherwise just do what you think would look cool on this wall okay so about approximately how big is that project um it was about 30 feet tall and i think close to a hundred feet long and so something like that that's that's to me that's huge right to me that's, that's that's a lot of work so one of the things that i'm curious about and you know is the the technical aspects of, of of a project so can we just talk about that building specifically for a few few questions absolutely how long from start of paint to end of paint did that project take I think it took me about two months. Okay. Um, and that's because of my, I, I also work full time. So I, I'm working um, off hours and mm-hmm. weekends. Right. And so I'm so, kind of working around my schedule. So how about how many hours of actual painting do you think that project took? Um, I think it could, it, it's about 40 to 50 hours. Probably about 40 hours. Okay. Yeah. So if you were working nine to five, you could have done that mon- in a Monday through Friday, in a perfect world, right? I mean, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, okay. about, about a week or so. Yeah. About a week or so. Okay. So, but I'm oversimplifying it, I think, because you had the design process beforehand. So how long do you think the design process took? Not the, not the part with talking to the main street association and getting, getting their buy-in and all this, but the actual T- amount of time you spent conceptualizing it and getting it however sketched out it's going to be. How long do you think that took you? Um, I went through a couple iterations of mm-hmm. the piece. Um, and I think I probably about, I had about three different sketches and okay. each one took me, you know, maybe a couple of hours, but okay. um, there is, there is a little bit of, you know, back and forth and, and some right. of that takes a little bit of time and i think that the the back and forth process probably took about a month or so just okay. kind of um and we did that all in the the off season when the weather was still you know raining and whatnot so right. we had we had a little bit of time to to right. dial things in okay um so so uh, um yeah. let's say let's say a month okay um, you know yeah so you're looking at you know five weeks of 
you know, if, if you could start this without any delays, you know, five weeks of work. Okay. Now the question that I, I still, that actually seems pretty short to be honest, to be honest, I was expecting you to think to say a little longer. That's what I was thinking. I, I'm pretty quick, <laughs> but from, okay. So you've got the, con the conceptual drawing that this is, this is the one that's been selected. Okay. Boom. How do you then go from, and how big was that drawing, that sketch? Uh, I, 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 mean, ske I, I sketch on my iPad, so it's about a, so not know, very big. a piece not of paper. Yeah, not very big. Okay, so how yeah. do you take it from the iPad and blow it up to a 30 foot by 100 foot scale? I mean, are you... Are you going out and are you, yeah, what's the, what's the technical that, that, what do you do? Cause this is actually, I'm really curious about this because it's like, I'm like, I don't know how you would do that. So wh what's that step to get the, I mean, I'm sure you got to get the building primed and you're know, putting a base coat on and, and getting it prepared to take paint. Right. Right. In the, yeah. so, okay. I, we'll skip over that. Cause that's like watching paint dry. Nobody wants to hear that. Um, <laughs> But so when you're ready to like begin the process of taking and bringing the concept to life, how do you go about, what's that? Are you sketching it out on the wall or well, are you just working on sections at a time and hope it comes together or how's that work? Well, uh, for me, th this is the part that I kind of call the, the magic part. Uh, okay. So, and so I, uh, I don't, I do it at night, uh, because I use a projector. Okay. And I have a, a high powered projector that projects the image digitally onto the wall. Okay. And, and so it projects the full image and I have the line work okay. laid out. And so you can see on the wall where all the lines are going to lay. Right. And then I have myself and my wife and usually maybe a couple other friends come out and we just put the ladders up and start painting the outlines onto the wall. And I, right. I like using pink paint because pink, pink is usually not in the design, but it's, it's the way I reference the, the line work. So everything is, is kind of lined out in pink paint and huh. then, <laughs> you know, you got your, your sketch on the wall and everything right. is, uh, you know, proportionate and yeah. exactly how I have it on the, the line, the, the drawing. And so it's good to go. And it only takes us maybe an hour or so to do that. And then, you know, the next morning, everybody wakes up and they look at the wall and there's got a, a line work on the, so on the wall. So it's, it's like magic. It, does anybody ever call you and go, what have you done? <laughs> Cause I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you. What I was kind of thinking you were going to say is something like a projector. That's, I was mm -hmm. thinking that. But I wasn't thinking pink. I was thinking black, and I was thinking more like like the lines of a the outlines of a tattoo or something like that. That you would you would do it in black. So the fact that you said pink, I was very surprised by. I get why you do it when you explain it. It makes perfect sense because black would be in your um, in 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 your your mural, so that it could be a little confusing. But pink, okay. Yeah, it's just, I mean, pink is my favorite color, you know? Is it? Okay. All <laughs> yeah. Right. All right. All right. So I, pink I is like your favorite? Pink. Yeah, pink and orange are my favorite colors. <laughs> okay. I mean, this is cool. All right. So you, you spend an evening getting the, mm -hmm. the lines put onto the building. Now, you said yeah. ladders. Are you really going up a 30-foot building on a ladder? You're not using like a cherry picker type thing? You're going up on ladders? Uh, For the first night. Yeah, we're using ladders. We we have big ladders. I bring my truck, and I've I've got a. We're gonna rack talk on about your truck. Tr we're gonna talk about the truck, man. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about the truck. <laughs> and uh, yeah, wow. so the first night we just we got multiple ladders, and you know, so everybody's kind of different heights. I I always do the the tallest height because I'm used to it. So okay. we got people that are just ground level, people that are mid level, and I'm always the highest. And so, all right. All right, oh, we're gonna yeah, we're gonna come back to that because yeah, I got I got questions there. So lined out, <laughs> and then are you the only one that's painting the mural, or do you does your wife help you? Do you do you, do you bring in people, or is it just 
are you applying paint? Uh, my wife helps me a ton. Okay. She's she usually uh, she she does a lot of the fill work. Okay. So once once everything is lined out, she'll do a lot of the fill work, and I'll have friends that come and they'll come for a day, and uh, especially on the the Pialop one, I had friends come and they'll paint for a day and just kind of fill things in, block out colors. Right. Um, some friends come by just to say hi. Some friends come and bring candy and, you know, water no. and whatnot. That's cool. All right. So, so, yeah. How are you painting the building? Is it is it spray paint? Are you using brushes, rollers, combination? What's Walk me through, let's say, you've lined out a bird. Okay. Uh, yeah. Say it's a goldfinch. Okay. State okay. bird. Let's talk about goldfinch. You've got a big goldfinch on the wall, uh, lined out in pink. If all you were going to do is that bird, how would you? What's the technique that you would use to to do the bird? If I'm painting just the bird, it's a hundred percent spray paint. Okay. So um, I'll start with the the line drawing, and then I'll start blocking in the colors with spray paint. Um, I have a couple different uh, caps that I use, and so I'll start with a fat cap to fill in the the, the big areas with color, and then I'll uh, reduce the cap size, and then I'll do medium for kind of the feather texture, and then I'll do a thin cap to do some some uh, low lights and highlights, and then kind of look, little feather wisps in there, mm-hmm. um, and just kind of you know build it out, and it takes it takes a little bit of time to do that, just adding the layers in there but it's all spray paint and uh, it makes things go pretty quickly actually okay. so so detail work the bird would be detail work in my, my way I think that's spray paint is there yeah. any part of a mural that you're rolling it or brushes or is it all um, usually the background I'll either roll or um, I actually I bought myself a, a paint sprayer like a mm-hmm. house sprayer right and so I just load the, the exterior paint into the sprayer and I'll just mm-hmm. spray the wall. Okay. And then I'll, um, you know, that makes quick work of that too. So that's, right. that was uh, kind of a, that's something that I, I had to work into to be able to afford. Right. But once I, I did enough murals, I could, you know, afford an upgrade in my tools. And right. so now it, it makes my process a little bit easier, which is okay. kind of a cool thing. So. Y- we we haven't talked paint, so now's a, a good time. So let's when you when you do spray, are you buying commercial cans, or you like going to Home Depot and buying Krylon paint, or what are you doing? Uh, so I I I go to uh, here in Tacoma. We have a, a shop called Artisan Craftsman, and they mm-hmm. have um, a whole cage full of. Uh, like mural quality paint. So it's, it's a little bit different than your Krylon or Rust-Oleum. It's okay. Uh, I would say it's, it's thicker and it, it, the flow is a little slower. Okay. And so, um, you don't really get drips, which is nice, especially right. if you kind of know what you're doing, you know, you, it's not going to drip. And so it, and it's, uh, it's made for outdoors. So mm-hmm. it's, it's going to last a long time. Right. And, um, it's it's really nice stuff and so i i like using using that i use montana as my kind of go-to right now Mm -hmm. and um it's just it's overall nice stuff and um it has kind of the the color range that i'm looking for okay So, so i haven't bought a can of spray paint in years so if if you if I were to send you down to Home Depot and you were going to buy Rust Oleum or Krylon or whatever you know insert name of you know big big box brand spray paint, what would yeah. a can of what would a can of paint cost? Six bucks, seven bucks, maybe. Um, yeah, somewhere around there. All right, so so is this is this mural quality paint drastically more expensive? Is it you know is it cheaper? And I'm thinking it's going to be more because it's a specialty item. Depending on where you get it, it's between seven and ten dollars. So it's not yeah. drastically expensive, if if I'm kind of correct that a can of spray paint seven bucks. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's just kind of you know, kind of the the tool for the application. Right. What it comes okay. down to. So, how 
If you okay, I'm not allowed to paint anything. <laughs> There's a story of me painting my office at home one time and I was painting and I walked into the house. I was barefoot, walked into the house and there was green footprints through the house on oh, the carpet. No. Carpet yeah. and hardwood floors. And I, the, the the question was, you know, I won't say exactly what the question was, but what in the were you doing? I, I was completely oblivious that I was standing in paint and walk. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just close. So I don't paint. Um, and when I did try to paint, I was never, I was never a good painter. Like runs, drips, edge work was terrible. I don't. It's just not my thing. Yeah. And I certainly don't want to be on a ladder thirty feet up, twenty five feet up, two feet up. Uh, against a wall. So, so, but the question I have for you is if you're on a ladder and we're talking about the Charlie's, you know, I'll call it the Charlie's building and you're up on a ladder, how do you get distance enough away from the wall to see what you're doing? Yeah. Does that make sense? You know, I'm, I'm thinking you're like right next to, you know, you're on the ladder, you're 18 inches away from the wall at most. You've got, I'm sure you're going up with more than one can. You've got some, you know, some rig where you've got six, six, you know, like a holster. I do. Yeah. But but how do you, (laughs) how do you, how do you, you're too close to the the subject, aren't you to paint? So, uh, yeah. So the, the first, after the first night when we trace, um, I, I rented a lift. Okay. And so I kind of worked my way up. So I started at the bottom and, um, you know, worked up to a point where I, I, it's too tall for me to just c- climb up and climb down on a ladder. Mm-hmm. So right. I rented a lift, and the lift is nice because it has a little uh, deck that I can stand on and I can bring all my paint up. Right. And so, um, and I had to get certified and all that, you know, so I have a little certification and that I <laughs> am able to drive this thing. So, okay. All right. I, I have it against the wall, and basically, you know, it takes a little bit of time to get used to but you know once you stand on it for a while you used to the shaking and whatnot but i have all my (laughs) paint up there and i can paint a section and then i can move a couple feet and paint and so it's actually pretty convenient but yeah yeah so that's nice but on a uh there are some were some sections um that i had to to bring the ladder up and so in that case i had a, a little tote like a canvas tote bag like a shopping bag just right. throw all the paint in there and have it over my shoulder grab one out do a little section reach you know maybe uh, whatever my arm length is two two feet or so three uh, feet and yeah do that do uh, left side do that uh, uh. <laughs> so, the, the, so you got to be ambidextrous you got to be able to paint with both r- left and right hand essentially yeah Okay, so the, once again, Scott's not going to do this ever again. So, you know, you're not training me to be your competition because <laughs> I'm left-handed. My right hand is useless, so you're safe. Okay. We, we can train you to do this. No, got, no, trust this. me. Trust me, you can't. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, and with the the oh, wow. the lift, there was actually, like, I think there were phone lines that oh, just, ran just, a, but, like, just in front of the mural. Right. So, you know, it, I had to be close enough that, you know, I'm making sure that I'm clear of lines and everything. And so it's it's a, a little bit of a game that you have to play to make sure that you reach okay. everything and, you know. So, so you, okay. So you go through and you do the whole 30 foot by 100 foot, you know, you painted it all out. Does... Do you apply like a sealer coat over all of it? Is there, is there anything that you can do to help slow down the weathering of, I mean, cause it's going to be out in the cold, the wind, the rain, you know, snow, you know, it's unlike a piece of art that you hang in your home, which is in a temperature controlled space. This is, this is now going to be baked by the sun and frozen and wet. What, yeah. if anything, can you do? So for the Charlie's mural, um, I chose not to do uh, any coating on there because the paint that I use is exterior rated and um, the spray paint is super heavy duty stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, in some cases, especially in like high graffiti zones, there are um, like graffiti coatings that you can put on there that are, um, some are sacrificial 
which means that once you clean it off, it the coating comes off with it, so you have to reapply the coating. Okay. And some are non-sacrificial, so it's basically like a silicone coating that you put on air that's clear, but it's like a rubbery coating. Like Teflon, and, so it's just yeah, the, the other thing. Sl- okay. Yeah, okay. but the um the just the the downside of that is they're super expensive, mm-hmm. and so sometimes in 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 the case of you know the Charlie's mural, it's more cost effective for me to go out there and just paint over a small section, touch it up, touch it up, rather than paint the whole thing with the really expensive you okay. know anti graffiti coating. Okay, so. Thank you for indulging me on the kind of the nuts and bolts of, you know, the high, high level nuts and bolts of a mural painting. Yeah. So at the time we're recording this, it's late January of 2024. How many murals have you completed? Hmm. That's a good question. I think, um, probably, you know, probably close to 20 to 25. Okay, I a couple think. dozen. Then, Let's just say a couple yeah, dozen. Yeah, a couple All dozen, right. yeah. So when you are approached or you're approaching a, an owner of a building, right? Let's mm-hmm. see, we can use Charlie's as the constant reference here because you already said you didn't code it. Um, yeah. And that might have been just a budgetary constraint by the by the, by the the client. Like they, you know, they're, they have a budget of X. They can't afford 2X. If, let's just say it's double the price to code it. So they... Are you offering maintenance of these murals or are they, it's done and whatever happens to it is unfortunate, but my, my work is done here. Um, I, I really like to offer maintenance and I do offer maintenance because I think it, it, um, for the longevity of the piece. It's mm-hmm. in my best interest and the the city's yeah. or whoever the client's best interest to you know keep it good looking and I oh. I want it to I think it best serves the community if it looks its best and yeah, you know right, it's right. it's also a, a statement to to uh, whoever is you know tagging a piece or uh, defacing a piece just as quickly as I can come out there and touch it up. And it right. just shows that, you know, it's, it is being maintained mm-hmm. and it is like an active art piece. And right. so I think, I think that's just a good sign for the, the, um, wherever it is, you know, just to show that we are here and, and I'm okay. able to respond. What do you think the expected life of a piece would be in, in Puget Sound? I mean, are these 10 years, a hundred years? You know, forget the tagging that that you can't control that. But if 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 the if the building was just left alone after you painted the mural, what do you think the natural life of a mural would be without um, you maintaining it? Like, you know. Yeah, yeah. For from my experience, uh, just seeing other, I my murals have not been up that long yet to really right. have a reference for my personal uh, pieces. But sure. Um, just seeing other murals, I've seen them last, you know, 10 to 20 years. Okay. Um, which is, I think a pretty solid. Yeah. It's um, very solid. It's very yeah, solid. I, yeah. I've okay. done a little bit of documentation myself on murals in Tacoma and I've seen murals that have date back to the early nineties that mm-hmm. are still, still up. They do look a little worn, but they're, they're still here. And what's, um, these aren't well they're murals but they're like but back in the day when a lot of buildings were brick right and they would paint advertising on the side of a building what's right. really kind of cool sometimes is when there's a building and then they built another building right next to it they obviously didn't take the old coca-cola ad off or whatever it was and they demo that building and now you got this this really cool old ad on a brick building i think they look awesome like i like yeah. that look of uh advertising on the side of a building and that'd be kind of cool the same thing though is like if the charlie's building if they ever built something right next to it right and they left your mural on the wall and and, you know 100 years from now they take it down and here's your mural that'd be that'd be kind of cool to unearth you know i'd be like yeah that's cool that that would be amazing so are 
are are municipalities is the city are they primarily your your client or is it is it the business owner or is it a combination of the two who's who's who are who are your clients um these days it's a lot of uh i work with a lot of cities and i've i've uh i went through the uh here in Tacoma we have a program program called Spaceworks mm-hmm. and they're uh sort of a they're a nonprofit and what I would call kind of an incubator where um they they train uh entrepreneurs, business owners and artists to um educate themselves and and prepare themselves to work with clients. Mm-hmm. And so they they give the tools that artists and and business owners need to to work with their clients and so that's how i started out in tacoma and um i was able to uh be uh i get onto the artist roster as a a mural assistant and for for my first year and then i became a a mural lead mural artist and so that kind of helped me learn to work with clients and learn to work with uh, you know, city budgets and work with officials and kind of talk that, that language. And, and so that, that set me on a path to better work with, uh, officials and professionals that, that work in that area. And so Mm -hmm. I can express my artistic ideas in a professional manner. Right. And so that's kind of what I, I thrive on doing now. Okay. It's like, like like I referenced earlier, recording this in January. You're probably not actively working on any painting. You might be you might be uh, conceptualizing a project, but do you have anything lined up for this upcoming year? During mur- um, I'll call it mural season. Yeah, I call it mural size season too. Yeah, that's okay. that's that's what I call it. Um, okay. I now is the time where I'm in talks. So okay. I'll I will say I'm I'm in talks with a couple different. Uh, Okay. Uh, clients right now and th- this is the time i i kind of schedule my year that way right. so the beginning of the year when it's rainy and just not nice to be outside this is the time that i'm sort of put my business hat on and right um, you know starting to to make deals and and put bids out and you know when the sun starts to poke out that's when i start getting the paint out well, you're wearing a Tacoma Rainier's baseball cap. So is that your business cap? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. I'm also really excited for, you know, baseball season. I, I love going to see the Rainier's and um, I'm, I uh, I love seeing my, minor league baseball. It's just it's fun. Oh, for I, me. Do, I do too. There's, I, yeah. I got it. I, I, I will say this though. Yeah. I don't like the fact that the Tacoma Rainier's are called the Rainier's. And I, I, I say that for two reasons. Mm-hmm. Number one, it was always the Seattle Rainiers. Back in the day, it was the Tacoma Tigers. Yeah. Way back when Tacoma baseball started in the 1800s, they were the Tigers. That's that's what the team started out as. Uh, you know, In the 60s, it was the Giants, and then the Tugs, the Twins, the Yankees, the A's, Tigers. I don't like the Rainiers. Nothing against... I think the Rainier's name belongs in Seattle, and I think I wish the the, the Tacoma team was named. I wish they were named the Tigers. They won't be because it's a Mariners franchise that that doesn't work well. So the Tacoma Mariners would work for me. But I seeing that R and having it related to Tacoma, I'm old and it just doesn't fit quite right. But that's that's fair. But it's a great ballpark. Fun to go watch baseball there. Not in April. April, Cheney Stadium in April. Nobody should. Ugh, it's too cold. Um, but it's a. It's great that Tacoma has that that running for it. Okay, so I am. I have the magical powers to grant you any commission you want. What do you want? What would be a, like? What's your my dream commission? Yeah. What's the dream job? Uh I'm. I like that question. It's my dream job would be a client that says a client that gives me parameters. Mm -hmm. So someone that says, okay, I have this wall and it's a certain height and length. Mm -hmm. 
I like these things, you know, say like, I like, uh, these types of birds that come out in spring. I -hmm. like, uh, flowers that, you know, remind me of my, my grandmother. Okay. I, I, my favorite color is purple. Right. Um, and then after that, show me what you can do. Yeah. Because and then <laughs> as a, as a, as a writer or as an artist, as a creative, that blank page thing is terrible. I can't mm-hmm. imagine that 30 by hundred foot blank piece of paper staring at me going, Oh, just do what you want. Oh my God. I, don't, I wouldn't know what to do. So I it like can be the a little that, daunting. Yeah. It'd be really daunting, but I'm talking about, okay, so I like the fact that we're going to give you the parameters. We want some spring birds. We want, you know, my grandmother, uh, you know, daffodils because it's the Puyallup Valley and, and there's the, the connection to that. Let's just go, those are your parameters. And purple, so we're going to weave some purple into it. Okay, I love that. But where do you want the building to be? What's the, 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 the blank canvas? Right. Yeah. Where, what is the, like to you at this moment in time, what's the like, oh, that would be cool if I could paint there. Hmm. I think, I mean, I really painting, I really like painting anywhere in Washington, especially. Um, mm-hmm. I always have fun painting in places that give me an opportunity to also sort of feel like I'm on vacation. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, if I'm I'm painting somewhere away from my house that I can stay the night, Mm -hmm. maybe stay in a a cabin or, you know, camp or something like that. Just, just it's, it feels like in a space that I can just get away from, from my normal, you know, life and just, go paint and have a little excursion. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I like that. You know, I don't have like a specific location in mind, but anywhere that I can just get away from my normal studio, um, life, I think that would be really fun to do. Okay. So you don't have like any designs, like you want to paint. Ah, I want to do the Tacoma dome. Uh, could you imagine what would you, what would you say if they approached you? about painting the Tacoma Dome. Would you would you entertain that challenge? Uh, you know, it's I've I've thought about this and I thought about um the like the Mariners City Connect jerseys, you know, cuz uh-huh. I love designing things. Um but things like that are it it would be really fun and quite the honor to do, but yeah. Um and almost in the same breath it would be really tricky experience because you the parameters are so tight and the um the the people i mean everybody loves you know seeing things like that and you you get a lot of opinions oh yeah um, you know and so and i i definitely don't don't mind uh opinions but um, sometimes it's, it's a little bit of, it's a lot of pressure actually to, to make something and I, you're never going to please everyone. Oh, That's, no, no. You know, even, even in making murals, you're, you're never going to please everyone, but the, you're too young to remember when the Tacoma Dome was built, but man, when they put that, uh, oh boy. Yeah. People, yeah. there was a lot of people were not happy with the, the art that was selected for the, the dome. Um, yeah, I, uh, I I I did I did some research actually at the the Tacoma Library about the Tacoma Dome and and seeing the the whole process of that and even the the neon art that yeah, was inside yeah. the building um, yeah. that was you know they they gave that artist a lot of a lot of grief. Yep. Um, yep. You yes, know, they did. And it, it's a tough position to be in oh, as an artist. Yeah, I. Uh... So, I mean, yeah. I guess my thought is I, I like to pick and choose my battles yeah. and for yeah. my own sake and for my own, um, you know, mentality, so I, your sanity, to, keep you sane. Yeah. My yeah. own sanity. I need to, right. to choose things that I think I, I will be good at and will mm-hmm. be, uh, taken, um, you know, welcome, 
welcomingly. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah. Let's be honest. The Tacoma Dome, I don't want to say it's an icon. I mean, it's it, structurally, it's it impressive because it's yeah. wood, right? But it's, it's a, it's a sports complex. It's, it's not, I don't think in a hundred years people will be taking tours of the Tacoma Dome for its artistic and ar architectural insignificance. But how many hundreds of thousands of people a month would see your work as they drive or crawl past the Tacoma Dome? I mean, from a from an ego standpoint, that would be a, a, a you know, I did that. I mean, that, that'd be a real big statement. Yeah, I but, mean, that would be amazing and you know i even think the same thing at the murals that i've I, that i have done you know <laughs> considering yeah. people that are you know driving into parking lots and you yeah. know, driving past you know down main street yeah just you, they probably most of them don't even know who i am or don't even you know yeah, think they, about they, it but they're right. they're seeing that work and i right. think that's really cool it's that's that's the part that I love that's it's sharing art with the community and mm -hmm. you know, like, even if you don't know who the artist is like you're you're seeing something that is different from the next what? brick right. building which is All cool right. so a two-part question here and it's an impossible question I, I'm setting you up for failure I'm okay I'm being, ready I, I like you so I'm telling you I'm setting you up for failure I told you those yeah. wasn't gonna be hard questions I lied this is a hard question so first question do you have yeah. any children no okay so you won't quite get the reference in, but it'll work with me. What mural are you the most proud of? What's your favorite mural? <laughs> That's, you know, what's your favorite kid? Uh, you know, so, I mean, is there a mural that you've done that you think came out and you're like, that's even better than I imagined? Yeah, that's. You know, it's hard. I know it's an yeah. impossible question. You can skip it. <laughs> I will let you skip it. Uh, but I'm just no. curious. Is there, is there, do you have a mural that you're like, yeah, that came out awesome. I love how this came out. I, I do. I actually, you know, it's okay. tough to say, and I hope, hope none of my other murals are listening right now because. <laughs> but, I love uh, them all equally. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, you know, often I say that my most recent mural is my favorite mural just okay. because I'm, I'm learning and growing as I go, mm -hmm. um, which is, I mean, it's just fun for me to, to see my progress and, and see it almost, you know, in a way in stone, you know, if, right. if you will. Right. Uh, but one mural that I had the most fun with and also I'm the most proud of is, um, near it's near uh the tacoma community college campus mm -hmm. it's across the street it's on the side of uh the sushido restaurant mm -hmm. and i was able to work with a, a couple really cool uh businesses and I, it was uh two blue herons and a red wing blackbird in the middle and i um <laughs> I worked with the, the neighborhood council there okay. and uh, the Tahoma Audubon Society, which was really cool because I got a, uh, a grant from the Tacoma Arts Commission and uh, I needed a little bit more funding. And so the Tahoma Audubon Society uh, helped me with the rest of the funding and okay. uh, the Tacoma Housing Authority provided the, the, the wall and... Okay. Um, after working with the, the neighborhood council, we came up with the concept and it came out really, really cool. And I'm super proud of it. And that was one of my tallest and longest murals at that time. And so okay. it just, it taught me a lot about, um, working on a mural on, on that scale and just sort of putting elements together to make a, a cohesive piece at a, on a large scale, um, you know, project it, it, everything kind of just came together for that okay. one. And it was a, almost, almost like a, like a dream project, you know? Cool. No. And I, I know it's an impossible question. I, I know it's a very difficult question because you feel like if you, you know, you said, well, you said your favorite color was pink. I mean, 
by making that statement, you've just disrespected every other color. No, you I, haven't. I have. Your I preference have. is you like pink. <laughs> I mean, yellow's fine. Blue's okay. Green's great. I use them all. You know, it's not like I'm not anti, you know, magenta. But sure. it's it, it, it's when we place things. But it's when I talk to creatives, you know, whether they be a musician or, you know, a, a writer or, uh, you know, anybody. If you've got any body of work, there's certain pieces that stand out to you for whatever reason it, it it that might be your favorite piece right but technically it might not be your best work it True. might be it, you know and i'm and, you know your best work might have been this building over here where you were able to adapt the concept to the different um building surfaces you know blah 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 but you this is the one that resonates with you right now and that's that's cool so I mentioned earlier your truck mm -hmm. and cause on your website, it's kind of got this motion graphic of you walking in front of a truck, shaking a can of paint. And I laughed because the truck was, and then we talked about this on the phone and I, what did I say it was, did I say it was a 68? Uh, you said 68 and you were really close. Yeah. And in what year is it? It's a 67? 69. 69. 69. Okay. Yeah. So it's a 69 Chevy and it's yeah. got that, to me, that classic pickup look. It's a yeah. utilitarian vehicle. It doesn't look fancy. Uh, like if you go back and look at a, like I had a 62 Chevy. It had that big wraparound windshield. It, that was cool. Yeah. But it, you know, it, it, trucks aren't supposed to be cool. Trucks are supposed to haul things and, and yeah. be, you know, a working vehicle. And that your, your truck looks like a working vehicle. I call it an old man truck. I mean, that's kind of the look I'm I'm going for. Yeah, it's kind of got the it's kind of got the old man look. I'll give you that, but at the same time, that's not the vibe that the video put out. The video put out to me was that here's a guy who's an artist, and this is this is the tool that gets him to the work, and it's yeah. functional. You had mentioned it, it, you you sleep in it on occasion, and um, and things like that, and and so. Wouldn't it be easier to work out of like a sprinter van or something though, from a, from a purely ease of use? You know, um, maybe a to answer your question. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. But that, that's not me. I'm, I'm not the, I don't go for easy. I go for, yeah. I, I mean, mean, most, most of my, like most of my wardrobe is from the, the seventies or earlier, uh, uh -huh. Like I love my my '60s pickup. I I just I like that that look and feel, and that's just kind of me. And so well, that's those are the things I I really enjoy. And so I I like to I like to include my personality into my my art. Well, and let's let's be honest. If you were driving that truck over in Eastern Washington and you broke down in Mabton, um, there's somebody in Mabton that can work on that truck. If you Absolutely. had a sprint, if you had a sprinter van, and it's the Mercedes version of the sprinter van, uh, you're probably getting towed somewhere really expensive because it can't be worked on by just about anybody. Where that truck, you could probably fix everything on that truck. I, I'm not mechanically inclined, and I would be willing to try to work on the truck. It's the yeah. the the simplicity of it, the lack of of modern features whether they're benefits or not is debatable uh yeah it, but it's it's got good clean lines it's a good looking truck and so i think it's good that you're showcasing it on your website i really oh, do. thank you seriously yeah so you've got some projects you're you're in the, you're in the, the discussion phase the planning phase for this coming mural season like like every artist you know budgets um municipalities non you know all these agencies have you know you got to it's like cracking a safe. You got to get everything to line up just right. It's a lot of work. I get exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. So you also have a a, a a a a brand of merch. So how'd you get started doing that? So I I started out painting when I was in high school, and then after high school, I was continuing to paint, and um, I had big visions of you know becoming a a you know famous painter, and but at that time. 
you know, I was living with roommates and my roommates really wanted to support me, but they just flat out said, you know, we can't, we can't buy canvases. We don't have any place to put them and, you know, it's too expensive. Um, so that brought me to the idea of, you know, making t-shirts and I can make t-shirt designs and put, put them on a shirt and, you know, for 30, 25, 30 bucks, you know, my friends can support me that way. And so that's kind of where the the shirt brand came from. And, um, I just started being consistent with that consistently putting out, um, different Mm -hmm. shirt designs and, um, my friends would come back and, and buy a new shirt and it just, the brand built from there. Right. So are you, these are screen printed, correct? Yes. Are you, are you doing the screen printing yourself or do you outsource that? I outsource that. I, I work with a, a company that's here in the Northwest. Um, I learned how to screen print and I um, had a, a sort of mentor that, that showed me how the, the process worked so that mm-hmm. I could be a better designer and, and design the, the shirts to accommodate screen printing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I learned that early on and, um, but you know, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist to the the point where it was too hard for me to let things go or even to get to a point where I said, okay, this looks good. Mm-hmm. It's much easier for me to let someone else do that and, you know, let them take yeah. that part of the, the, the project and, and move on with it. Well, I don't, I don't mean to disrespect screen printing or any, any manufacturing, but a screen, uh, the screen print isn't the, it, there's, there's craft to being a good screen printer. I get that. I'm not trying to say that there's not, but the real, right. the real, the reason you're bu- we're buying a shirt is because of how it looks, not necessarily how well it was screen printed. So if we like the design, so the designs, the art, that's what people are, to me, that's what people are buying. Now I probably just insulted, you know, every screen printer in, in Washington state, but no, well, no disrespect. You know, intended. actually, um, I mean, I, I agree with that in a sense, but I also, what makes my, myself and my brand a little bit different is that, um, I have a, a specific way and a specific ask that I ask screen printers how to, to print my shirts. Okay. And so, um, all my shirts are, are what are used, uh, used water-based ink and, um, use a process called discharge printing. Just and so, right. yeah, so um, you basically, you, you lay a screen on the shirt that has mm-hmm. the design, and then you use a chemical that uh, removes the dye from the, the shirt and then replaces it with a water-based ink. So once the the shirt is printed with the ink and you, you wash it one time, it washes into the shirt. And so it has a super soft feel and it actually is in the t-shirt. So it's never going to crack or peel or come out of the shirt. I'm, and so I'm, I'm rubbing myself because I thought I had a screen printed shirt on and I don't. Okay. I'm like, so, so it feels like the shirt. The, so it's, so in, it's in the dye. Really? Yeah. So that's I, what, that's what's oh, a little bit special. That's cool. Because, you know, you go into a store and you see a screen printed shirt is usually plastic salt ink. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, it's on top of the shirt and right. it's, you know, you can feel it, the kind of plastic feel. Yep. yep. Um, but, you know, I wanted something a little bit different because that's just kind of how my mind works. And I, I had, I have always been into the fashion and also just, you know, trying to figure out how I can separate myself a little bit, you know, and that's, so, that's one thing that, that really stood out to me. In the effort to keep us, you know, kind of on track and, you know, we're getting close to where we want to wrap this up. Sure. D- but the shirt, the blank. Can that yeah. this process be done with any shirt, or do you need a, a does, does the shirt need to be a special? Does it need to be one hundred percent cotton? Does it have to be all polyester? What can it be a blend? What's what sort of blanks do you use for this process? Um, I think it works best with one hundred percent cotton. Okay, which so, is beneficial. I mean, yeah, I think. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, which is most most t shirts that I use. Um, I know with um, with sweatshirts that are you know part polyester um it doesn't doesn't work so okay. it's, i think it's a cotton thing okay but so so it's almost like and this is very crude of me to say it this way but it's almost like they bleach 
that's, sense, that's, yeah. that's harsh. That's a harsh word. I mean, you know, I mean, not harsh, but like bleach is a, is a harsh chemical, but they, they, they lay it on, they put a chemical solution on and it takes the, it, it removes the ink and then removes they go the back. Dye. Yeah. Yeah. They remove the dye. Sorry. And then they go over it. Mm -hmm. And, and then when you wash it, 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 it's is, in it, the adheres, shirt it adheres to the, to the fibers. fibers. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. That, that's really cool. Yeah. All right. A I know bit of science. <laughs> yeah. A little science. This has been a more technical episode than I anticipated it being, but for me, it's cool. I, you know, so, but we got to, I got to ask you some questions. These are questions I ask most of my guests. So yeah. number one, when you're not doing murals and you're not, what do you, what do you and the wife like to do? What do you guys do for fun? What's, what's fun for you? You said baseball earlier, but you know, yeah. Um, besides baseball. We, we adopted a dog about two years ago. Uh, she's from Guam. And so she flew over here from Guam. I know it's kind of funny, but um, she was wow. she was a rescue dog. They they found her abandoned in a in a building and uh, so huh. they they fixed her up and uh, you know, took care of her and then um, we adopted her. So they flew her over here and so her name is Jolene. We we love Dolly Parton, so you know <laughs> that's the song that was going through my head right there yeah right. okay yeah okay yeah. So, so, I mean, you, can't, right. you can't forget that name no. so um so we love taking jolene pretty much everywhere we go to to bars that are dog friendly okay um we take her camping um you know just anything anything that we can take jolene out and go for walks i mean that's always a, a bonus I love working on my, my classic cars and my truck. Um, and just, you know, a lot of times, to be honest, I'm even in, in, when I'm not making art, I'm still thinking about art. I'm still mm -hmm. drawing, you know, even on vacation, I got my iPad, I'm still drawing. Okay. You know, right, so it's just so kind of, it's like nothing, a bug, you know, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. All right. So <laughs> when we talked on the phone, I always ask this question, but yeah. I don't have my notes in front of me. I don't remember what you said. Right. But I want to say that you don't drink coffee. I don't drink coffee, but I yeah. do oh, like okay. a good hot cocoa. <laughs> all right. All right. That's right. That's right. I remember that. Okay. So we're still talking. You're still okay if you don't like coffee. But yeah. Yeah. Question I ask here. every. Yeah. yeah. I'm learning to be tolerant. I'm accepting of all <laughs> beverage drinkers now. I don't know. <laughs> Um, where's a good place to get hot cocoa or a cup of coffee in the Tacoma area? Where, where do you like to go? Uh, I really like Lander. Um, it's okay. in Lander is in kind of between stadium and Proctor and it's just, it's a really cool spot. It's, they've got seating for just, you know, a little what bench street, seating area. What street is it on? Um, it's right across the... There's like a little bridge. It's on. Is it by Magoo's? Yeah. Yeah. It's like 21st. It's like right where yeah. 21st and I street. Yeah. Me. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's a nice little spot. Little, little neighborhood. I didn't, I didn't know there was a place there now. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So next question. I'm going to magically get to Tacoma around lunchtime and I'm going to be hungry. So where's a good place for me to grab lunch? Um, one of my favorite spots right now is Dusty's Hideaway. They've, they've got, you know, cheap beers and they just updated their menu. And uh, it's it's a little restaurant that's in a, a house. You know, it's like you walk in, it's like a, a, a craftsman house and you walk in and it still looks like a house inside. you got like the main room, you got a living room, the bedroom and everything right. just sort of laid out like that. But, you know, they got good, good cheap beers. They got... You know, a good menu kind of just... So where's this at? Um, this what? is in McKinley. In McKinley, huh? Yeah, it's right off of uh, McKinley Avenue. So it's it's just up the hill from the Tacoma Dome. So, it's, you know, it's a good oh, spot. Oh, is it, is it on the corner? It is on the corner, yeah. And was it a coffee shop many a few years ago? It's kind of got... It's kind of, yeah. it's kind of like a parking... It's got like gravel around it, like the yard was taken out for parking... <laughs> Uh, it's just back. as you come up, yeah. As you come up the hill, toward, as as I'm, I'm heading up the hill from Tacoma Dome, it'll be on the yeah. right hand side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that used right to be a that used to be a coffee shop. Okay. 
Yeah, I 15, don't remember that. Fif- 15 years ago or so. So that's, I okay, so, all right, cool. All right, yeah. so you mentioned they have good cheap beers. What's what's the go-to beer these days? Um, you know, for me, I'm I'm a little different. Uh, I like hams. Um, I always Rainier, you know. <laughs> you know, hams is my go-to. Not everyone has that, so Rainier is my second second choice. Huh. I'm yeah. laughing at you. You, you could, you, no one could see this, but you and me. And I'm laughing at you, <laughs> not in a mean way. I'm laughing yeah. at you because hams. Okay, yeah. I, so no, I, get, I, get full, it. I get it. Full disclosure. <laughs> full disclosure. Hams is fine. I don't like Rainier. I never have liked Rainier. Even when I was in high school, I didn't like Rainier. I appreciate the branding of it. The 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 Peterson brothers and Isaac Olsen are doing that movie about Rainier beer commercials. They're in Tacoma. Yeah. They, 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 you know, it's great. I've got a art chantry poster over here for the movie, uh, the Rainier beer thing. It's cool. Yeah. I just never liked Rainier beer. It just, there's something about it. The taste, I just, it doesn't work for me. Hams, PBR, Ole, yeah. uh, Heidelberg. Yeah, yeah, sure. Good, good, cheap, crushable beer. Rainier was never my thing, but I get it. The um, is it the top of Tacoma? Up, that's up a little bit further, right? Yeah, I yeah think, same street. I think when I was in there last, which is maybe five years ago, they had a sign up that they sell more Rainier beer there than anywhere else in Washington State. Like that, that it. bar sells the most Rainier beer. I I believe that. I don't know if that's a good thing to be proud of, or I don't know. Anyway, okay. I mean, around he, around here in Tacoma, I think you know Rainier yeah. Heidelberg, you know. Yeah, but kinda... see, they, they they brewed Heidelberg in Tacoma. See, right. Rainier Rainier was a Seattle beer. We got to keep that we got to keep that rivalry going between Seattle and Tacoma. <laughs> that's that's part of the whole Rainier hat thing, you know. That's sure. why Rainier stays up in Seattle. And, and, you know, it's you know, it's fine up there, but yeah. anyway, okay, I get <laughs> All right. Um, the other question I ask every guest, very important question. You have to answer it. You can't pass and you have to answer it in its entirety. All right. Okay. You ready? I'll right. Give it a shot. Cake or pie and why? Hmm. I'm going to have to go pie. Okay. And, uh, because I've recently discovered chocolate cream pie. Okay. And I would I would at a little diner in uh Snoqualmie. Okay. And, um I'm I'm not uh I'm not a watcher of Twin Peaks, but it okay. was it was uh one of the, the Twin Peaks restaurant. Uh mm-hmm. you know, so we went there and I had the it was like their their highlighted piece on the menu. So I ordered the chocolate cream pie and it was the best pie I'd ever had. And so now I'm obsessed with chocolate cream pie. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. It's just a question I ask. I stole that question from somebody else. It's some people it's easy to answer. Some people it's like asking them their favorite child. Um, yeah. You know, other people. Tough. Yeah. Some people agonize way over it. Um, I'm going to go back and listen to every episode and do a tally so that I can say, you know, you know, in, in the lead will be X, you know, I do think pies in the lead. Yeah. I think apple is probably in the lead of the pie categories. Berries probably a strong second. The various cream pies come in lower down the, the list. All solid. There's no wrong answers here. You yeah. know, people can like cake too. Uh, cheesecake is a fine answer. Um, yeah. It's just kind of fun. It's just kind of fun. So the last question I really have of you though is, okay. During a conversation like this, we always overlook something. So what did I not bring up to you that you think I, we should we should have a conversation about? Yeah, uh, I don't know. I think we kind of hit everything. All right. So yeah. where can people find you online? Where can they see your work, um, both, both the clothing and your art? Where's a good place for people to find you? So the best way to find me is on Instagram. Uh, my art page is at Curtis Ashby Art, and my clothing brand is at Northwest Till Death, and both of my websites are the same, CurtisAshbyArt.com and NorthwestTillDeath.com. You can find all kinds of shirt designs and check out my murals and just kind of see what I've been up to. 
Cool. Why Northwest Till Death? Uh, Northwest Till Death is my way of saying that I love the Northwest and I'm proud of where I live. And um, it's also a way for me to share that with everyone else. And, you know, you don't have to be from the Northwest. You don't have to live here. But, um, you know, maybe the Northwest has, has taken, you know, you're taken with it in some way and you just are you just love the aesthetics or you just love the something about the Northwest and that yeah. that can be a part of you as well. Okay. So that's that's yeah. solid. There's no, no wrong answer there. I was just curious. Yeah. North Northwest till death. Yeah. It's um, just kind of a, a sense of pride. You know, when you see like a, a foam finger that says, you know, something till death, you know, it's, that's kind right, of, right. Right, that's right. kind of my, my chant, you know? So do you have a, a Northwest till death tattoo? Have you have you have you committed to the brand? Uh, you know, not yet. Uh, but I'm planning on doing it soon. Okay. All right. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thanks for taking the time to sit with me today. This was fun for me. I hope you had a good time, and I awesome. wish you continued success. And I, when well, next time I get over to Tacoma, I'm going to have to go, uh, and I will. I'll go. I'll go drive by a couple of them, take some photos, and kind of show them on the website and all that too. Oh, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed the show. You can reach me on Twitter at Explore Law State. I'd love to hear your comments. You can also visit our website at explorewashingtonstate.com. If you know anyone who would like the show, it'd be amazing if you'd share the show with them. This is the biggest way that we grow this show. Good old word of mouth. Glad you were here with me today, and I hope to have you listening to the next episode. See you then.